First of all, give us a sense of how big a problem this end is. Can you go put your arms around how big a problem the shortage of semiconductors is right now? Well, as you know, everything's being digitized. And so semiconductors are in almost every product we use, from home appliances to cars, and now even more so with electric vehicles. They're in the cloud. They're in our smartphones. They're in just so many things in our lives. And what's happened is that we had uh, some shocks in the system, which became big because we had this notion of being very efficient, just in time manufacturing, lean manufacturing. So you didn't hold a lot of inventory on hand. And when there were flips in the supply, which happened because of COVID, these things spiraled out of control and became very, very big issues in, in, the, uh, in the supply chain. And so you're seeing for big companies, some of them are able to get uh, their components still. But for smaller companies, uh, some of them are having a very hard time, long lead times, some, sometimes up at as much as a year of waiting to get a, a part that you need. Uh, people have been raising prices. Uh, so all of these things are affecting sort of that innovation economy that the world depends on. When you talk about just in time, did we underinvest globally? Did we underinvest in the capacity to design and manufacture chips? I think that uh, there's a lot of concentration in it, and there's only a few suppliers, so there's not a lot of diversity in the in the supply chain. But I think maybe to explain it a little bit simpler, if we think about it, something close to home like toilet paper. When you think about, it, there was supply of toilet paper and a pretty constant demand of toilet paper, maybe a little bit more because people were working from home. But you didn't buy a lot of toilet paper at your house because you figured you could go down to the store and get it. Now, what happened, people got nervous whether they could actually go down to the store and get it. So they started putting more at home. They started buying more. And the system wasn't set up for that. So there was this surge in demand, and that meant that there were shortages. And that is part of the problem with the chip business. The, the supply is there under normal constraints. But now, with these things that have happened because of COVID, and very interesting things happened because at first the demand dropped. Everybody thought the whole economy was slowing down, so the demand dropped. Then the demand surged because all of this work from home and all of the other, other things. So there was this ripple in the demand side. The supply side was basically there, but it's kind of like this toilet paper situation. Now people who are, have the ability are trying to hold more inventory so that they don't get hit by these ups and downs in the process. I would say, though, that it is important to build more semiconductor uh, fabs, and it's important not just for the making of the chips, but also the packaging of the chips, the testing of the chips. But even beyond that, it's all the little components that go around it, the boards. I mean, we really, uh, you know, we have an issue where there were very few suppliers. There was a broad range of, of products out there that, uh, that, and components that, that people needed. And all of this led to, you know, a lack of resiliency you know, a lack of ability to adapt to these big shocks that might happen in the system. Are we on a path, Paul, in your judgment, to coming out of that challenge? Because you mentioned the concentration. TSMC is the biggest producer, as I understand, of microchips around the world. They've just announced a major new investment in new fabrication f facilities. We have Intel saying we're going to go back into fabrication, not just design. Are we going to come out of this with a more diversified portfolio of suppliers or just two or three big ones getting bigger? I think we're going to have uh, mostly two or three big ones getting bigger. It's very, very expensive to build a new fab. It's five to fifteen billion dollars. Takes a, a couple of years of investment before you get that. Uh, you get a return on it because you're starting to build chips through it. It is definitely true that the big guys are going to invest and build more fabs, and they're going to build more fabs in different places as well. So we'll get some geographical diversity. But then you worry: Are we going to have this boom and bust cycle where right now? There's too much demand for the supply, and then supply gets overbuilt, and then all of a sudden there's too much supply for the demand. Now, that may not happen here. There's people on both sides of this issue because, of course, as I said earlier, digitalization of things is happening. Electronics is getting embedded in so many things. New things are coming up. Obviously, work from home caused a big demand for, for computing products, uh, the cloud. You know, all of this AI and machine learning stuff is, is creating it, digitalization of, 
automobiles and, and factories. And I mean, just so much stuff is going on that can create more demand. So it's not clear that this is going to be an oversupply situation in a couple of years, but um, that, that has happened in the past in the semiconductor industry. Well, pursuing that very question of boom and bust, I mean, if you look at the global demand in terms of value for microchips over the last 10 years, it's been its own form of Moore's law. I mean, it's just gone straight up geometrically, not arithmetically, geometrically. Do you expect that to continue or does that flatten out somewhere? No, I think that we're going to continue to see a, a strong demand because not everything is digitized yet, and so there's going to be more and more going into different things. And as, I, as we said, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning is now going into a lot of things. The cloud is expanding, and it's not just the cloud in big data centers that are located somewhere out in the, you know, near uh, cheap power and, and so forth. Now there's this thing called edge computing, which my company uh, is depending on, which means pushing portions of that data center out around the landscape. So there's going to be distributed computing all over the place that you're going to be able to tap into when you want to do things like uh, strap on your metaverse headset and get in, you know, get into get into that uh, virtual reality and, and things like that. You know, the stuff that, that people are talking about is future applications. So 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 that is going to create uh, you know continuing demand, this idea that we're going to spread the, the computing out and uh, and then uh, you know, there's still crypto, all these, you know, all of these things that demand chips. Uh, so I think demand is going to continue to go up. Uh, here at Wall Street, we, we like to talk about investing a lot. Uh, what does that tell you to an investor? Is this a good business chip design and manufacturer? Or are you better off investing in companies that are using the chips? Well, right now, the, ch the companies that are using the chips, many of them are having a hard time getting access to them. So you'll see impacts on their earnings right now. The ones that are supplying, hey, it's a great time. There's shortages. They can raise prices. It's not fun dealing with customers that um, you know, are upset that they aren't getting their chips. But from a financial standpoint, they're doing well. I think what you'll see, though, is that the uh, companies that are using the chips are going to become more creative about how they do things. They're going to try and despecialize so that they're going to use more commodity components. And that means that they won't have to go searching for, oh, I'm missing this particular little piece over here that was special to me. I can just use something that everybody's using, make it easier. So those are the companies that I think they will come out of this. Um, and, and they're looking bad right now. So they're down right now because their earnings are down, but they should recover as the supply uh, comes back. Now, the big guys, I mean, TSMC has been on a, on a roll from the early days when we started using them at Qualcomm to outsource our manufacturing of chips. And they're in a very strong position because they're ahead on technology. Their, their technology is extremely good. It's extremely leading edge. And so, so much of the world's semiconductor supply at the leading edge comes out of TSMC, which of course leads you to also be concerned about geopolitical risk associated with that too. And that's why some of these nearshoring efforts where fabs are going to be built in the United States are so important.